Five things you need to think about if you're considering getting an electric vehicle charging point installed. Let me show you. I get a lot of customers asking me, can I run an electric vehicle charging point off my existing garage consumer unit? And the answer is, it depends. Let me show you why. A lot of garages are just run off a very thin cable because they're just designed for lights and sockets, nothing heavy like an EV charging point. This is a classic example of that. They've run in a little 2.5 mil or 4 mil squared armored cable just to run enough powerful lights and sockets in here, but it's not strong enough to run a seven kilowatt electric vehicle charging point. Whereas it would be really easy to install a charger off this consumer unit that's already here, then you have to start rethinking really about running a cable from the house. So is the house consumer unit suitable to run a charging point from? Let's talk about that next. So this garage consumer unit is fed from its own independent circuit in the house, so that's good. It has an armored cable here feeding from the house consumer unit, which is on its own separate circuit breaker. It's rated at 20 amps. Now the issue with that is that this cable can only take 20, 25 amps before it'll start to overheat and catch fire. We would need at least 32 amps of capacity in order to install a seven kilowatt electric vehicle charging point. So that means that although we have a cable here on its own dedicated circuit, unfortunately, we can't use it. The second thing you need to think about is where do you want the charging point to be installed? The customer here has asked if we could put it on this pillar. It's only 21, 22 centimeters wide, which need a little bit more space. So for that reason, we probably, we're not gonna come off the garage consumer unit anyway. We're probably not gonna put it here because it just won't fit. So the other option is to put it on the wall here. Now this is the parking area that's kind of like, it's a driveway with two spaces. So in the middle of the driveway is ideal, then you can reach both vehicles. So this could be a good spot, but it's just a question of, well, can we get a cable from here back to the house consumer unit? And is the house consumer unit even suitable to connect to? Do we have spare ways? Um, is there enough capacity? So let's have a look at the consumer unit in the house. So this is the consumer unit, usually in annoyingly small cupboards like this. We've got to check this now and see, are there any spare slots to be able to install a new circuit? Is it actually, you know, is the existing consumer unit safe and modern enough to connect to? Or do we need to look at adding a, a new consumer unit potentially? So we do have spare slots here, which we could put a new circuit in. We do have RCD protection, which is good. It is only a type AC RCD, and that's not allowed for an EV charge point. So we would have to replace that with a type A RCD, but that is doable. There isn't any surge protection in here, so we would need to add a surge protection device as well. So we can use this existing consumer unit, but it will need a few little upgrades to make it safe. Another thing when you're looking at the consumer unit, you want to just check this main cutout fuse because this limits the amount of power that the whole house can take. And often these are rated at 60 amps if they're these old ones, which means that you're probably not going to have enough spare power capacity to run a charging point on without upgrading this. So you would need to ask your distribution network operator, such as here it's UK Power Networks, ask them to upgrade this to an 80 or 100 amp, preferably 100 amp. Um, and these tails are also 16 millimeter squared. They'll need to be upgraded to 25 millimeter squared in order to be able to cope with 100 amp fuse. Sometimes the modern ones, they're gray and they've got a black label on it with white writing and the white writing will say 60 amp or 80 amp or 100 amp. And uh, so then you know already what your main cutout fuse rating is. So now we know we can use this consumer unit and, and that we're gonna get the power from here. How do we get a cable from here to the charging point location? That's what we've got to figure out next. So this is the understairs cupboard where the consumer unit is. We've got a cupboard under here and we can run the cable under the cupboard and then we can run it along and drill out to the outside wall, which starts about here. So this is where we would come out with the cable in this corner from the understairs cupboard there. And then we would simply clip the cable along behind these bins, low level in a nice neat line around the corner here and then up the wall to where the charger would go on this wall here. So we do have a cable route that is feasible. Some houses it's a lot more complicated that than that. Some houses it's really easy, but it really varies so much from property to property and it can have a huge impact on the cost, whether it's really easy, quick and cheap, or whether it's a very complicated route that involves digging or other things, then it can get a lot more expensive. 
So for us at Artisan Electrics, for us to do a quote for you as a consumer, to install a charging point, we'd ask you to send us a few photos of certain things. So I'm gonna take photos now of the things that we would need in order to do the quote. So we'll take a wide angle photo of the wall where we want the charging point to be on. And then we'll take another photo showing the driveway just so that we can see where the car is actually gonna be parked. Then we'll take a photo to show the cable route, point to where the cable would go through the wall, for example in the house we can take a photo then you can actually draw a line where the cable would go and stuff and that makes it really easy for us to see what's what. Photo of the consumer unit with the flap down so that we can see the circuit breakers and see any spare ways that's really important and then a wide angle photo of the consumer unit with the surrounding area. We also need a photo of the gas and water bonding so this is the gas meter. You've got an earth cable that goes onto this. We need a photo of that just to prove that that has been done and it's safe. The main earth bonding connection for the water is usually by, by the, where the main stopcock is for the water. It should be within about 600 mil of that, which is usually in an annoying place like a sink, under sink cupboard. For this one, we found the main stopcock, but I can't see a bonding connection, but it does look like there are plastic pipes in here, in which case, it probably doesn't need bonding anyway, but we can check that with some electrical tests when we come to do the installation and just make sure it's all safe. And then we need a photo of the main cutout fuse here. So point five is really choosing the electric vehicle charger that's best for you. There are so many out there on the market, different levels of quality, different looks and different functions. So how do you know which charging point you need or want? Well, do some research, look at our YouTube videos because we fit tons of them. But one thing I could say is that there are basic features that you really want to look out for. Like does it do timed charging so that you can time the charge to charge up over the cheap electricity overnight? Does it have a lock function? Like a lot of them now have a digital lock function in the app. Tethered or untethered? Now tethered means that it has a cable attached to it that you wrap around. So all you have to do is unwind the cable and plug it into the charging into the vehicle. Untethered just has a socket on the front which means you need a separate charging cable which is a little bit faffy because you have to take the charging cable out of the boot, plug it in at both ends and if it's raining and stuff like that you really don't want to be faffing around with that so I would usually recommend tethered for most people. Different houses have different aesthetics and looks might be important to you so there are some really beautiful looking charging points, there are some more basic looking charging points and there are others in between. If you want recommendation for a charging point if you're in our service area here in Cambridgeshire please get in touch we'd be happy to help.